Hey guys, Aaron here. I'm in my office today. I tore my Achilles tendon like a month ago and had surgery, so that's keeping me out of the garage. But last year I published a video on the IMS bearing that turned out to be a very controversial video, not for the typical IMS kind of controversy that you might think of, but it was because of the information that the tech gave me or gave a group of us when we went into HBI Auto uh, they had an engine from a Porsche Boxster out on the table that I thought was really cool and he was going to do a demo on it. So I recorded it and I uh, thought we'd get a lot of useful information, posted that video. Turns out most of the stuff he said was wrong. So uh, after a lot of blowback online and from Ellen Engineering and uh, Porsche and lots of different places, I pulled the video down because the purpose of my channel is to educate people and to give you good information. And I definitely do not want to be propagating bad or blatantly false information. So what I'm going to do today is go ahead and post that video again. And I'm going to interrupt the video and I'm going to point out the issues with the video and give you the actual factual information. So the shop that gave this talk, they specialize in Porsches and other exotic cars, sadly. So about a year ago, after all of this went down and they were presented with uh, lots of facts from not very happy people who they kind of misrepresented, uh, I tried to work with them to reshoot something to get it back out there with correct information and helpful information but they did not want to redo the video. So uh, I'll get into that a little bit at the end on how some of that went down. But I just want to start by showing the video that I posted last year, and I'm just going to break in probably quite a lot and uh, give you some feedback. Oh, also, I'm pretty sure I'll do a follow-up video, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, when I get that done, you will be notified. Also very important, comment below, let me know what you think about this, your thoughts on the IMS, and uh, here we go. We're still talking about it. LNF Engineering in down Atlanta has... Dear sweet baby Jesus, we did not get very far into that. Uh, for our first fact check, Ellen Engineering is not in Atlanta, Georgia. It is in Moments, Illinois. But also, before even recording started, he was saying that this was an Ellen Engineering bearing. Also, very false, and the most important falsity in this video that I needed to point out, and one of the reasons that this video was taken down in the first place. This is not an LN engineering bearing. This is in fact a Tune RS DOF, or direct oil feed bearing. The retrofit bearing from LN engineering that is very popular is known as the IMS Solution. Hey, it's me from the future the next day. After watching my video back, I just wanted to insert something right here. I wanted to make it clear that LN Engineering actually has two solutions for the stock IMS bearing. One they call the IMS Retrofit, which is their ceramic bearing that you take out the old bearing, you put this new bearing in, and you call it a day. And with the IMS Retrofit, it's a 75,000 mile or six years is what they recommend to do it again and replace that bearing. They have another solution called the IMS Solution, and that is their permanent solution, which looks kind of like what is on here, where it does use an oil feed to the bearing, but unlike this one, they patented that the oil is coming directly after the spin-on filter adapter. So you're getting fresh, just filtered oil that's getting pumped onto your bearing instead of coming off the cam cover like this one here, where the oil is a little bit dirtier. So those are the two solutions now. So I just wanted to point that out real quick, and I did not stop him for all of the false statements that he made. Instead, I'm gonna leave those as Easter eggs for you guys. If you comment below one or more in separate comments of the things that you found wrong with this, I'm gonna go ahead and select one of them in a few weeks and uh, get you something, I don't know, a gift card or something. So as you find additional things wrong, just go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm sure that some of them I already know about, but uh, I want to know if there's more things that I don't even know about. Okay, sorry. Carry on, good sir. You know, they've done a great job of saturating the environment with that. Here's one that's been put in. This is the oil feed line. Now, what do you see? What do you see has happened here? 
to yeah. put this in, cut a groove in it. You have to cut the block. Mm. Now, from day one, I have fought this, and I still do. This is a personal thing. I hate that mm. because guess what? I've cut your block to get this oil line in. This oil line comes right off the 80 psi, right on the head. It's dumping oil in here at a tremendous rate. Tremendously unnecessary rate, and they all leak oil after the fact. Now, if you guys are track guys and you're tracking it, you don't care, I don't care, nobody cares. Because guess what, you're taking out and you're beating absolute piss out of it. You don't care. If you're bringing it home every night, daily driver, and parking it in your garage, you got spots on your garage floor. I'm mad. I don't want my garage floor mucked up. You don't either. So what do you do? You take this cover off and I pull that bearing out and I put their ceramic bearing back in it. After I put that ceramic bearing in it, I peel the race off of the front of the bearing seal, the race seal. All right, so here he's talking about using LN Engineering's IMS Retrofit Ceramic Hybrid Bearing, which actually does exist, but he incorrectly states that he pulls off the grease seal to let the engine oil lubricate it, when in fact the IMS Retrofit has always used a bearing without a grease seal. LN Engineering also kind of agrees with the premise I think he's trying to get at is that the IMS bearing is submerged in oil, so LN Engineering does not feel like pressurized oil feed to it is necessary. And the car pumps oil into that bearing all the time by itself. It don't need this. Now guess what? The LN Engineering in Atlanta told me that. Illinois. On the phone, person to person. Print. Nope, you won't see it in print. But me and him were talking at extended rate for a while. And he says, yes. Because I asked him, I said, what's to prevent me from doing that? He says, nothing. He said, actually, if it's my car and your car, it's exactly what I did. That's what I did to my 997 when I had it. Exactly. Never had an issue. That's what you do on 997s because 997s, you got to split the block to get this out. 996s, you pull it out with a tool and press it back in. 997, you gotta split the case. You know what? I'm gonna give that one to you. He is right in that the 997 or any Boxster came in or 911 from 2006 to 2008 does have an IMS bearing that is not serviceable. And it's true, in that situation, the grease seal should be removed from the factory 6305 non-serviceable IMS bearing. But it's not some shady little LN engineering secret. It's very commonly known, and you go to their website, they talk about it right there. It's something that they've recommended for years as preventative maintenance for these engines. So, you just pull the seal off. 2008 Barstool. No, no, no. Now, the Porsche bearing looks just like, a, and these do too, but Porsche bearing looks just like a front wheel bearing. If you've ever seen one apart, it's the same thing. It's steel within a steel with steel roller balls. The only difference with theirs is they put a ceramic ceiling around it to where supposedly if it don't get oil or grease, it ain't gonna hurt. But, in print, they still say every 50,000 miles replace it. That mostly false on this one. The 50,000 mile service interval was for the IMS retrofit of old. It hasn't been made since 2014. The single row pro has since superseded that. Service intervals for all of their dual row bearings in their IMS retrofit are six years or 75,000 miles. And of course, their IMS solution is a permanent solution that never needs to be replaced. I'm a 2008 Boxster. I, I, from what I understand, that's like the last year that that becomes a real problem. And I've been told you have to split the block to get that one out on the 2008. You can't. M97 engines, you have to split the block. M96s, you don't. The only way to get it out is split the block. So like I said, you take these three bolts off, that off, pull it off, and then you take the seal off of the bearing and then you put it back on. Then it just puts oil right into your factory bearing and you don't have no issue. So where does this leak? You said it leaks 
they just it, they, they just do they leak because they're pumping so much pressure it looks it just leaks right out of here looks just like it does when it goes bad from the factory and leaks oil it just pumps so much oil out of there it just can't tolerate it it never was meant to have that kind of pressure so on a 997 when you should replace the clutch and do what you're supposed to be doing that's what i that's what i did on my personal car when i when i still had it yeah how and much, I, how much did in addition to the cost of the clutch. It's minuscule, nothing. Once you're there with the clutch, it's, I mean, you know, this job right here is you, you time the engine, you lock the cams, uh, you pull the tensioners out, you pull this off, you pull that out. So it's it's two hours, two and a half hours of my time. So then you're good for forever? I'm, I have personally never seen one fail. I ain't saying you can't break it. You can break anything to try hard enough. <laughs> But I haven't seen one fail. This is a car you're driving. You know, I mean, unless it's GT3 or turbo, most people don't track 997s that much. So if you're driving it every day, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, be Now, Scott, are we gonna have to tell the service advisor we want this done? They're not gonna recommend it. We well, do. I am if you're here. I'm gonna know it. Right, but let's right, say if you're right. some other situation. Yeah, we have to be knowledgeable about You that. have to be knowledgeable. And it's out there. And yeah, it's easy. And they know. <laughs> They'll know. But they're not going to tell us. If they're smart, they're going to recommend it. Because if you do a clutch in the flywheel and then in a year this craps out, are you mad? You better be. I'm going to be mad. Then you're going to say, why didn't you tell me? It's my job. That's something else. It's my job to just lay it out for you. My thing with them is. I don't want to make your decision about your car for you. I want to give you 100% of the information and then you make your decision to do what makes you happy. And then I hate to say it, if it comes back in two years and something's catastrophic and you didn't do what I asked you, sorry, pal, you got to look in the mirror. I'm no, I'm just an honest guy. I'm black and white. Do you I'm not sure. Everybody does that? I recommend this every time. Because I know from personal experience with my own vehicle, it worked. Is there any mileage thing like after such and such a mile or before such and such a mile? In my experience, if this don't break by 50K, it never does. Saying that if your IMS bearing has made it 50,000 miles, then it's never going to fail is completely false. Couldn't be further from the truth. That's just, I thought, pretty common knowledge in the Boxster community. I have see, I have worked on 996s with 120,000 miles with still the OEM. It never got touched. Now, I had a I had a track day in Greensboro in 15? Yeah. I, I think remember. it was 15. I and a client drove right up and it... <laughs> puke right as he stopped just big puddle right out there in the in the parking lot across from the coliseum yeah i don't blame him i think it was 15 14 right in there somewhere are you going to be talking about your scoring later today uh we can i have just i had a client we just did that for this week too well my question is ln engineering and plan six solutions are all suggesting that as responsible owners, you change your oil twice a year, right? Regardless of mileage, right? So, I was, right what I was going to tell you, we was going to talk about is, I'm a 5K guy. Mm -hmm. There is, I don't. I learned this a long time ago. Audi blowed their foot off with the four-cylinder turbo engine by changing every 7,500 miles, and it only had three and a half quarts of oil. Then they decided to put a diesel filter on it and it went to four quarts. And it was turbos every week and engines and, what? come on, really? It's much cheaper to just change your oil. I mean, it's just smart, you know? Yeah. So if you don't put five grand, five grand on a year, go a year before the oil change? You, you tell me, what, what does your oil do? The exact same thing brake fluid does. And where do we live? It sucks water out of the air like crazy. So you're going to look me in the eye and tell me that engine oil absorbs water just like brake fluid.
I'm sorry, but you get no partial credit for this. Have we never seen this oil does not mix with water? The reason that some people recommend every six months or more commonly I hear people recommending every year or 5,000 miles is because of oxidation and oxidation can lead to corrosive wear. It has nothing to do with oil absorbing water into your engine or whatever. Yeah, engine oil is not hygroscopic. It does not suck. <laughs> it, does, it does not suck. <laughs> I can't even say it. It does not suck water out of the air, okay? I mean, we can even do a little science experiment for this one. This one is, oh my God, I give up with you. What's the worst thing for an engine? Inside, water. Not peanut butter or petroleum jelly or, ah, I'm just being a dick now. So you, you, I mean, either way. I, I'm a six month 5K guy. That's just what I believe. Now we use Motul. It's, it's a pretty doggone good product. It's not the cheapest product that we can get, but it is a good product, really good. And if you start up your car and you move it and you shut it down immediately. That's, that's a big problem too. That's another thing. Is you guys that have multiple cars and you, honestly, that's why I don't have a car now. My wife says, why is it sitting in the garage? I said, I drive them all day. I don't even drive, I mean, it sat there for a year and I have a thousand miles. So I just got rid of it. I just don't drive it because I drive them all the time. But if you have the car that sits all the time, when you do run it, please run it. If you crank it up, even if you don't got to go nowhere, let it sit outside and idle for 30 minutes or 45, just run it, let it burn it off. It burns all the fumes and hydrocarbons. It burns off that water. It gets the oil hot. Truly, I think, honestly, I wonder if the Ferrari is part of the problem is they sit so much. Mm. It's better to drive a car than let it sit around. Mm. It's just driving. I mean, Porsche's meant to drive. Yep. So, uh, back to this ceramic bearing. So you're saying that what you recommend is a ceramic bearing without this external oil. Yes, yeah, that would be my first recommendation. Yeah, okay. on the 996. Yeah. What's your second? If it's if it's a 997 that no, you have to break the block, then I wouldn't yeah. even. 997. Yeah, yeah. I would I would put their bearing in it. I do like their bearing. I would put their bearing in it, but I wouldn't add this. The LN engineering, yeah. LN ceramic with it. Yeah. See taking off. Yeah. So what's the pressure inside compared to this? Well, this is this is basically just laying in the block. It's just a regular block oil, like you would get in the crank. So it's not much unlike. A, a splash plate in a Briggs and Stratton. So yeah, the oil is just sitting down in there. PSI. You said this was like... Well, that's, there is no real pressure in the block other than the basic atmospheric pressure. You're talking about 15, you know, 14.7 PSI, which is one bar. Okay, here a master tech is telling us that the crankcase is under pressure of one bar. Okay, I am not a mechanic. I don't know jack about a lot of stuff. I just try to show you what I do, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. The M96 and M97 engines in your Boxster run under a vacuum of four to six inches of water column. In fact, I just did a video recently on testing the pressure to test your AOS. This is not that force, this is force fed. That way it's not force fed. It's just laying in the hole that's yeah. in the engine. This is force fed. So I think what he was trying to say is that since the engine is a wet sump engine and the IMS bearing is at the bottom of this, that if there's no grease seal on the IMS bearing, that the engine oil will lubricate the bearing, which is correct. And that's the reason why the IMS retrofit has no grease seal. However, the IMS solution pressurizes the oil. However, the IMS solution does require pressurized oil since it's just a normal bearing like your connecting rod and main bearings and it would not function without the pressurized oil. But this does not mean that the IMS solution is going to leak because it's using pressurized oil. Far from it. There are hundreds and hundreds of cars out there running with that, with the little notch notched into it, and no leaks. Ellen Engineering has had great, great success with that solution. While our tech does make it a point to say that it is his job to give 100% of the information, unfortunately, this time around, he did not get it 100% correct. You know? Now, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're tracking all the time, that's probably not a bad thing. I understand that. I do understand it. But it, every car I see come in, it makes such a mess out of it. 
I mean, that's just, it's just, it's filthy, the awful looking underneath there. So yeah. that's the only package, the LN package that you install? Yes. I mean, there's others, right? There, there's a few other companies that do it. Yeah. yeah, but this is what we've, this is the one that we had put in. I have two or three of them back there. Um, like I said, this was really more developed for the racing deal, you know? But see, how do you, I mean, there's no way to get the oil in there. See, this is supposed to be flat all the way around, the way Porsche built it. So you got to get that oil in there. So then you got to cut your block right there. If you've got 997, then if you're going 50K, no problem. You're probably You're good. probably going to be okay. The, 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 the only time to do that is if you change your the, the Honestly, the one, the one 997 that I've seen it happen to was the one that was the doctor that worked with my wife at that just in the cancer center and his did it and he brought it to me in Greensboro and he didn't want to fix it so I bought it fixed it that's the only one I ever seen um, that I've personally I ain't seen it I mean there's a show out there but it's the only one I have personally run into but his broke the pump first his old pump returned now this is an old pump return run right off the cam he broke this first this broke first in his car. And then it threw that into the chain, then the chain broke the IMS. So his IMS didn't fail. His actually return pump failed. If you do the clutch and pressure plate flywheel, is the rear main seal, I guess that leaks on the- Oh yeah, then you, yeah, you pull that out. Yeah, hey, so, yeah, but that doesn't one. have to split. No, the no, 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 there's a, a tool to take this out, you pull it out, press it back in, you're good to go. That's recommended when you do a clutch. I, you, I'm not going to do one without it. I'm just not going to do it without it. I'm sorry, I don't give you that option. <laughs> I, I don't want to have that problem. I, I really don't want to have that problem. That's, I mean, you know, this is $14. Really? You're not going to not spend $14 after you're spending $2,200 for doing the clutch? Come on. So what is a, uh, without the clutch and the rear main seal, just the uh, IMS itself, what would that cost? Take the engine out and do that with the ceramic brand. $1,500, something like that? No, the, the bearing is no, no, $1,100. No, 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 the total cost. Yeah, I said the bearing by itself is like $1,100. They charge a P out of you for that stupid thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. They got the job figured in up there, set. Honest. I don't do, I honestly don't do price. The advisor does that. I just know how much time it takes. Hours is what I work off of. I have X amount of hours in the day. My techs have X amount of hours. That's all I'm about. Honestly, I just, I, I don't mean to duck you. I just don't know that. If I tell you, it'd be wrong. I promise. I don't know. He was asking what's the total cost of doing it. And I just, I don't know. Yeah. $2,500. That notch in it. Now, if you were a professional mechanic and you gave this kind of information and it was rebutted to you well before I'm making this video and you saw how incorrect and inaccurate this information was, do you think that you might want to re record a video from the beginning, making it look like you know what the hell you're talking about? I mean, I would definitely pick that route. But after the company was given the choice to do that, here was their emailed response. All right, so I was gonna hash out like the emails back and forth, but uh, it's too much work for my editing and it's getting late and I don't feel like doing it. The important thing was we tried to say, hey, let's reshoot the video and make everybody look good, make Ellen Engineering happy. And uh, that was flatly turned down and said, we will only talk about the tuning kit that we sell and install. And we refuse to talk about anybody else. Well, <laughs> obviously false. I think we were kind of shocked and dismayed that they wouldn't do it. So um, here we are. So this is the video that uh, they want to put out there instead. I don't think it's a very good look personally, but hey, it got me thinking about and researching and learning about these products. So I figured I'd take the time to share what I learned with you guys. So if you guys have anything else to add to the conversation, Comments below, that's the place to do it.
go hit them up and uh, give the video a thumbs up for me if you learned anything or got frustrated or, uh, I don't know, were entertained in any way. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.